some of the parts I've gathered so far is just some angle aluminum, smooth rods, 7 16 lead screw, these springs, and multiple nuts, along with these metal spacers that are going to go into smooth rods. Okay, I've drawn up the base table and slides in AutoCAD. I went ahead and cut it out, got it screwed together, squared up. Of course, you'll never get rid of the backlash, but you can compensate for it as long as the load on the table doesn't exceed the spring force. When I turn the lead screw, it's, it's a lot more tight. There's less, uh, there was really no backlash at all. I gotta push really hard to get it to jiggle at all. I was so. having some linear bearing alignment issues, so I designed a uh, shaft centering device. The idea will be that wherever I need the shaft to be, I can move it around and then tighten down on the on the screws on the outside. And the purpose for this was so that I add a leveling system so that I have a way to level the top tray. I've got my my drive nut drilled and tapped. Try out the motors on the machine. So far, opposite direction. The motor's actually running very cool. The drive is barely warm either. It's not sure why the torque seems to be pretty limited. Found this old printer uh, cart at work. Just bolted it down right here in four corners. Seems to work pretty good helps keep the frame straight. I've got this computer monitor stand that I'm using for my Z-axis rail. I'm a breakout board and all my enable and direction and step lines coming into the motor controllers. 24 volts coming in to the controllers. I haven't set... I had some major issues with these motor drivers. The machine wouldn't jog at slow speeds but it jogs just fine at high speed. So we did some research and determined that my drivers have incorrect components. So the current limiting, I guess the holding torque uh, circuit doesn't have the proper time constant. Here's, here's what the problem is. It's pin three and five, the voltage reference and the torque reference. So I'm gonna hook up the oscilloscope to these pins and figure out when the torque limiting circuit is kicking in and I'm gonna see if I can manipulate that. Uh, you can see I tried to change the key in circuit or the little activation circuit. Yeah, I tried to make some modifications, change some time constants, but it, I just couldn't make it work. It was, it was missing steps and I, I actually was making it work, but uh, I was missing a couple steps before I got it to activate. Ooh. That resonating a little bit. The Gecko drive doesn't come with a heat sink. It just has this bent you know, aluminum casing. So I took the heat sinks off of these cheap Chinese drivers and bolted it together. 
thread and tap some holes and I used the bolts to uh, to cure the, the gecko drive down with some heat sink grease and uh it's kind of just to top it off uh, I attached a CPU cooler so I put the control and the power supply inside this case the fan inside the power supply not the supplemental fan is making all this noise I had to turn the charge pump off because my parallel car doesn't support the EPP mode. Yeah, I'm ready for my first trial run.